I give them a snack and then they lie and I give them a snack Shh. again. They can pick you up, D. What? You said nobody was on. Hello, everyone. It's still going. Uh,
Oops, oops, oops. All right, so we have Suzanne, Anne Marie, Stephen, Monica, Tim, Chris, Mary. Oh, we miss them. Fred? Yeah, Fred's in a meeting. He's going to jump up when he's done. I thought it'd be late. Suzanne's here. So that's everybody, right? Zach is joining now. Mm -hmm. We don't want anything for tomorrow, right? Because you're not going to be here. So, okay. Oh. All right, so everybody wants to mute their phones. All right. So it's seven o'clock, so we'll get going. We'll call the meeting. Not white, right, but you need Not white. Right. Stephen, can you mute that you phone? I'm trying to mute that phone. I can't no, mute that phone. Yeah, I'm trying to. You gotta be the host. My though. iPad is not cooperating. I think I did it. All right. So, all right. So, um, we'll call the meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. And we'll all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We will move on to item number three, which is approval of the minutes. In the August 26, 2021 special meeting, can I have a motion to do so? Motion by Tim, second by Zach. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Opposed, abstained, uh, chair votes aye. All right, at this point, I'd like to make a motion to add to the agenda uh, discussion of possible action regarding the community center building committee's calendar of meeting dates for 2022. So I have so a motion. Moved. motion is made by Suzanne, I believe, and yes. sec seconded by Bill. He seems to be waving his hand or having a seizure. Um, mm -hmm. Hearing no discussion, all in favor? Opposed, stained, so carried. Next item on the agenda, discussion, possible action regarding the Community Center Building Committee calendar of meeting dates for 2022. Uh, as you all received earlier today, Monica sent around um, the list of dates for our 2022 meetings, should we need them all. Um, and they are January 6th, February 3rd, March 3rd, April 7th, May 5th, June 2nd, July 7th. August 4th, September 1st, October 6th, November 3rd, and December 1st. With that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the calendar of meeting dates for 2022 as presented. Tim Connors, Suzanne second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Stained? So carried. Okay, item number four, discussion, or actually now item number five, discussion regarding finance options available. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. All right, so what's everybody say? 
Take a budget spreadsheet. All right, can you, you can say it. Does it say? Yep. Uh, yep. Let's see where yep. estimate number two. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know, we have a couple. Um, we we have a couple different options when financing the community center. Obviously, we can go out and we can just borrow money. Uh, just a typical bond issue that we would go through, and then we would pay principal and interest back over a set period of time. While you can be very creative uh, with financing, you're still extremely limited. So what you're looking at right here, this is just a 20-year bond principal and interest payment with level payments. So that means the payment is the same every year for the 20 years. So again, you can see in the beginning, you're paying more in the early years, you're paying more principal, or excuse me, more interest and less principal, and that slowly changes over time. So for 12,500,000 at 1.84% over 20 years, the level principal and interest payment would be right here, $752,706. So that's the number that would need to be put into the budget each year. If we were to go out to bond, as we talked about in the past, um, we would need a referendum vote for a borrowing of this size. With a referendum vote, we certainly run the uh, potential of it being voted down. And if it's voted down, then we're kind of stuck. So the other option that we talked about was doing some type of lease purchase uh, with a private developer where they would essentially build the community center and we would pay them a set amount of dollars over a specific period of time. And at the end of that time period, we would take over ownership of the building. Having the build, building built privately um, gives us a little bit more flexibility because we don't have to deal with things like prevailing wage, um, probably get things built a little bit cheaper depending on the situation that we get ourselves into and so on. We had talked a little bit about the potential of doing this uh, with the Haineses in the area directly behind Stop and Shop. That was one of our options. And one of the things you had charged me with at our last meeting back in August uh, was to sit down with Tom Haines and to try to come up with some different financing models. Um, I was able to do that. Uh, I also had conversations uh, with Bill and with Anne-Marie kind of going over uh, some of this stuff. So I want to introduce to you the concept that Tom Haynes is comfortable with. Um, the numbers that are in here still need to be discussed and negotiated, but I want to explain to you kind of the theory behind what we're doing. Uh, when I'm done doing that, Bill, I'm sure you want to jump in and talk about some of the things that him and I discussed um, that go a little beyond this, but all right, so can everybody see this where it has the, the yellow, the green, and the blue? Everybody can see that? Okay. So <clears throat> if you look in this column where it says total, notice the payment amounts are exactly the same. So it's 752, 752706 or $5, just depending. How we're going to pay this is broken up currently into four different categories. The first category is what I call Seymour principal and interest changes. When we redid our, restructured all of our debt three years ago, we did that with this project in mind, where we would have a declining slope on our debt service. So each year, our debt service payments would get lower and lower over time. One of the things that we had discussed was our debt service payment level, and each year, there would be a little bit more creative. So if you look at this column right here, and I'll just make it a little bit easier to read, this 2.8 million 32,000, this is our current debt service payment. For the next year, our debt goes down, goes down, goes down, and goes down. So this column right here, column C, is the difference between these amounts. So whatever we keep the debt service level, we pick up 29,400. The debt service goes down again, 47,800 and so on. So that is payment number one. 
Payment number two is a set payment from the town of Seymour, which this number could be any number that we negotiate with, with Tom Haynes on. For the sake of this, I just put in 250,000 as the highest we will ever pay. And you can see how that will decrease out over time. Skip over this column and go to column F. This is the column that the Haineses will pay for the building of the community center. So in this example, in the first year, Tom Haynes would pay $481,806 toward the community center. These three payments, the principal and interest, the Seymour payment, and the Haynes payment total $752,706. So again, same thing that we would pay here, same as borrowing it, just a different way of breaking down how the payment is. So we're trying to have uh, you know, a public-private partnership where the town is paying a certain amount, the Haynes family is paying a certain amount, and we're getting to that number. We're trying to do this, well, at least with this example, with the least amount of impact to the budget overall. So in year one, once we put this dollar amount in, this 250000 it's in the budget and it never comes out. So after the first year, we'll have no impact on taxes which is a positive thing. The only increases on the town side would then be the change in the principal and interest payments as they're falling off from other debt. So it'll slowly increase over time what we pay. The big thing that really drives this idea is what I call pilot, so payment in lieu of taxes. If Tom Haynes decided that he wants to build whatever he wants to build, he can avail himself of the tax incentive plan. The tax incentive plan for the town of Seymour and for a project of Tom's size, which would be over $3 million, would allow him to ask for a tax incentive of 100% for seven years, which would mean that for the first seven years of the development, there would be no taxes paid. So everybody understands that and is comfortable with that? What this pilot payment does is it assumes that in the yellow section, in year five, Tom has put up $3 million worth of property around the community center. That, 300, uh, that 3 million, excuse me, would have an assessed value of 1.2 million at the current mill rate of 34.71 mills. That has a value of 72,000. $891. Instead of Tom Haynes paying us that $72,891, he would use that to pay towards the $700, $752,000. So we're going to add a fourth column now of contributions. So as he's adding these payments, his payments are coming down until we get down here to year eight. At year eight, I assume that he doubled the amount of um, taxable development that he's done up to six million. The tax payment would be 145,782. So that would close out what he would do. In turn, would allow us to start reducing our payments until we got down here to year 13. This is nine million worth of. Uh, development. Again, at 34.71 mills, 218,673. So again, this is just, these are kind of numbers I threw in. <laughs> but as you can see, the Haynes family is out. Our numbers are reducing. Once we get to year 13, the Seymour payment will stop. The principal and interest payment will level off and stay 534,000. And we'll start to gain back this column as taxes now are, or excuse me, as the principal and interest payments continue to drop, but this is what we'll actually realize in the budget. So between year 13 and year 20, we'll pick up $440,356. Now, if you look at what was done over a 10-year period um, in Oxford, 
Uh, it's my understanding that they're paying close to $900,000 a year in taxes to the town of Oxford. So if you actually, if you put in some of those real numbers from Oxford in this column, it's gonna drastically affect the other three. Mm -hmm. So by coming up with these four different uh, payment buckets, we'll call it, it gives us the opportunity to, in the beginning for us, get some help from the Haynes family to get this going. And then later on, we're going to need to try to make that up to them in some way. So in years, let's say 21, 22, 23, and so on, we can then include a tax incentive to allow him to recoup, in this example, some of this 2.3 million that he's invested. So if we did um, seven years, let's say at that point, at 218,000, he would get back about 1.5 of his $2.3 million investment. So I think we need to make a decision as a board, and we're gonna talk about how we're gonna to present to the Board of Selectmen and what we're gonna to present to the Board of Selectmen, what our goal is with this. If we want, obviously we wanna build a community center and that's very important, but we wanna build a community center that's gonna be a catalyst for a very large mixed use development that's gonna bring in a substantial amount of tax dollars down the road. So while Tom Haynes is very open to this type of partnership, we need to make sure that we're not putting too heavy a burden on him in the beginning, because if he has to invest too much of his resources into the community center and helping us, he's in turn not gonna be able to develop into the property. So I, I went through this kind of quick, but I wanted to at least put it out there to see what, first, if everybody kind of at least just gets the overall concept of what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. and then what questions you may have. Once we've kind of gone through that, then Bill, you can jump in and, and talk about some of the things that we talked about as well to go on top of this. And then after my conversation uh, this afternoon with Tom, there's a, a, an additional wrinkle that I'll throw in. So who has questions, at least initially? So just yell out. <laughs> I do. Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, this, uh, this number that we're going with right now, I understand the whole breakdown of how it's being, how it's being financed. What is the number you're going off of? And how did we come to that? It's, uh, it's, I just picked 12 and a half million. Okay. So, but what we would do is once we, as a committee, mm -hmm. settle on how much we want to spend, we would create this, just a simple principal and interest payment. Yep. And then it would give us, you know, our, our total payment number here. Then we would go down and we would recreate that. Okay. Understand. And then, you know, fit the different things in. But again, I know it's it's kind of cumbersome. Um, this this column, column C, this section right here, we know what this is for the next thirty years, because these are the, these are the numbers that are set right here. Now this assumes absolutely no bonding. Correct. If we bond, it's additional that's added on top of that. Now again, an argument could be made that as this money is peeling back off, we should be reinvesting in other buildings, reinvesting in our roads, other infrastructure, so on and so forth. So, you know, that's just something to keep, keep in mind as well. This scenario with the Haynes paying substantially more than us in year one is probably not feasible, but we can kind of play around that and that's where the negotiation parts are going to come in. Okay. The, added, the added wrinkle before I let Bill jump in because Bill's just going to blow your mind with some of the stuff he's going to throw into the mix. Um, this town of Beacon Falls potentially may have some interest in regionalizing the community center. 
um, very early in the discussion, very tentative um, at this point. However, if Beacon Falls were to do that, we would simply add um, three more or at least two more lines in here to keep it simple. We would add a Beacon Falls payment and then we would also add a Beacon Falls pilot line because Haynes's plan is to start on the Seymour side and the Beacon Falls side simultaneously and work towards the middle. They're gotcha. not going to start on the Seymour side and go to Beacon Falls or Beacon Falls and go to Seymour. Um, they don't need the road put in initially to work on the ends. So that is the plan. So we'd have to kind of figure out how we would work that with, with Beacon Falls. Has anyone talked to Beacon Falls yet, Kurt, or no? Just preliminary? Uh, I believe it's preliminary, and I believe uh, Tom and Amory have a meeting with Jerry Smith uh, coming up this week, next week, at some point. Next gotcha. week, yes, we do. Next week, okay. um, so th there's that potential as well. But this kind of this is the worst case scenario for us at twelve point five million. All right. Well, the, the big elephant in the room. What does he did he commit to anything for twelve point five million? Is that why we're using this number, or what are we looking at? Real Tom um, realistically thinks fifteen million is probably a good number okay. uh, after, after our conversation today, um, and that may require the town to do a few additional things, perhaps um, sell him, uh, you know, the current community center for a dollar, you know, some different yeah. things like that. So you know, we have some assets that we can use. He's open to. Um, having a stronger tax incentive at the end, because if his tax incentive, whatever people build, their tax incentive is in the early years mm -hmm. when they haven't built as much. So right. for us to say to Tom Haynes, hey, listen, in year 21 through 24, we're gonna give you 100% tax abatement on all of your stuff. By then he's now 10 years into the property. That's gonna Correct. be millions of dollars of savings to him. Correct, because he's so got the income coming in. Right. So there's a lot more value to him. So it's ba it's balancing the value to both sides. For us, the value is getting some assistance, getting this off the ground, cheaper payments in the beginning, allowing us to slowly ramp into it. And for him, the value is, well, making as much money as he possibly can. And we'll do that in the later years. So there could be some good balance. But again, in the early years, we can't choke him out. We have to make sure he has the flexibility. Correct. You want to other, finish the project too. Right. One other caveat. Um, this is based on the last municipal bonding that was done, um, which is 1.84%. That was uh, the bonding that we just did in Ansonia um, eight months ago. Seymour has a higher um, rating than Ansonia, so the rate will be a little bit better than what Ansonia would have gotten. Uh, and also speaking with our underwriters, uh, Ansoni and Seymour have the same bond underwriters. It's a very um, advantageous market to be borrowing at this time. Correct. The issue, Tom Haynes would not get that rate. So his interest rate uh, will more than likely be higher than what we can get unless, and this is something we probably want to pull in, um, you know, Bruce Chadwick and Matt Ritter, our bond counsel. Mm -hmm to see if there was something that we could structure together where Tom is taking out the loan, but the town is backing it up or something like that to try to uh, provide a, a better rate, which leads to some of the ideas that Bill had um, and how we could potentially protect the town and the Haynes family uh, over the extended period. So Bill, if you want to jump in and add some of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, and I, can you hear me? Because yep. my this iPad is is old and broken down, so I'm trying not to move too much to stir it up and, and upset it. A lot of this, as you see in that very colorful column of pilot, depends on ta anticipated tax revenue. Now we're gonna we're gonna you know grant him an abatement, okay, or maybe it's uh, a, a decided a percentage of 
his annual tax bill, whatever that may be. So we do have, I think, some flexibility um, in year one, two, three, four. In the fifth year, um, if he's got $3 million worth of stuff built and taxes on it come to uh, whatever the magic feature was, 72,000 or maybe even higher, obviously, there's some flexibility in what we can give him, let's call it, which will uh, essentially lower, essentially the, the, the taxes that he's going to pay to this town and we're going to make the payments on are going to, to the net lower what we have to pay out. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple of things when Kurt and I talk factor into this stuff, I think. Um, Tom's not an old man by any stretch, but he's, I'm sure, has some sort of succession plan. And down the road a bit, we're making the assumption that Haynes wants to keep the project going, whether it's Tom Haynes, the owner running it, or his sons, or some committee of theirs, or whomever. And in that regard, we want to look to maybe get some protection if the town is in, you know, jumps in both feet. Um, do we take out an insurance policy, like a key man insurance? Uh, maybe the town pays a premium to uh, insure Haynes. I don't, you know, I'm, these are just ideas shooting from the hip so that there's financially, there's money that would be almost substitute for the pilot and to some degree, if something were to happen. Um, again, the, what no one knows down the road is what other kind of bonding are we going to have to do in three years or five years or seven years or whatever. Uh, the, roads in the roads in town certainly aren't finished. There's talk of Bungie School, of doing whatever it is they want to do with it. And true, the state pays a percentage, but the town still would be on the hook for some of that money. Um, so there's a lot of different projections and scenarios on this, but I think the overall concept of effectively using what Haynes would have paid us in taxes to offset our higher debt payment as it goes along is probably the best of the worlds we can look. We certainly can't go out and do a referendum, I don't think, and say, yeah, hey, townspeople, we want to bond $12.5 million and that'll go over like passing gas in church. That's never yep. going to happen. So the, that comes back to, let's go, for lack of anything better, let's call it a lease. Haynes puts up the building, builds the building, we lease, we, we lease it, we help with the debt payments. Maybe it's a lease purchase structure. But the one, the one thing we, we need to be mindful of is looking at what we can do close to final numbers. And again, a lot of it, you know, Haynes is a family business. Uh, Tom may have some interest. His kids may not. I mean, there's a, there's a lot to this. And when you get into the area of, well, as Kurt mentioned, maybe Haynes borrows money it's a town, a town guarantee behind it. Uh, I don't know where that puts us charter wise. Is that effectively committing to a bond? I mean, I can't right. tell you I'm not bond counsel. Yeah. But I think these are the kinds of questions that we want to keep in mind. But conceptually, what we're looking at in this very colorful column is probably the, the best of all worlds if we're going to march to this project, because if you take that pilot column out and you get down into year, uh, let's see if my eyes are any good, you get down into year nine, uh, the town's foot in a bill of 750, you know, 752,000 mm -hmm. and hopefully offset by 145 grand. So our net bill is, uh, I don't know, whatever the math is, 600,000 and so on and so forth all the way down. The kicker is going to be how much this thing is going to be assessed for and what the tax bill is going to be. Because if it goes along to where 
the taxes are a steady stream, maybe what's in green is too low. Oh, I, if that's the case, then, then we're getting more money in, which would lessen our hit out of pocket. Yeah, and I, I, so I was, there's there. I was gonna say these numbers are definitely low to that based on the building and how it went in Oxford. Yeah, I mean, as I said, this is this is let's call it the initial wish list. But conceptually, I think for us to take another step forward and start to really finite details, uh, you know, look into the legal ramifications of a guarantee of debt for a private entity, that may or may not fly statutorily. But I think conceptually, this is probably the way we would want to, we would want to go. Because the town doesn't have the cash to go out and just say, okay, we'll borrow 12 and a half and we'll pay, we'll pay Tom to put it up. And then we got Davis Bacon and all that stuff uh, to deal with. So, yeah, I mean, things like key man insurance that may enter into it if it's viable and it's okay to do again, legally and by statute. Um, but it's three quarters of a million dollars a year in debt payments. It's parsed out for the first eh, six, seven years, we get a bit of a break. Then the town, hopefully the, the construction is enough that the taxes that are gonna come forward and maybe it's something, you know, we craft out a percentage that rather than a flat number per year in taxes, we're gonna use towards tax, Haynes's tax money that the town would use towards essentially lowering our payment. Maybe that is a percentage based on, you know, I don't know, 20% uh, of his taxes for two years, 30, 25%, 30%. A lot of it involves the numbers, but conceptually this line 36 down to line 56, I think is the way we're going to end up going if we want to do this. And, you know, if, if everyone is comfortable with this scenario, um, then what I want to do is do a little bit more research on this pilot column. And what I can do is essentially put in the tax history of the town of Oxford. So from the time the project started until present day, what did he pay each year in taxes to Oxford? Now, yeah. it'll be a, a different number for us because the mill rate is different. But even if we just are lazy and put in his Oxford payments, it, to Bill's point, it's going to drastically change all these three other columns. Because if yeah. you're now in, and that's, you know, if we're in year 10 or year nine of Quarry Walk, and I'm not sure how long it's been, but if this payment, instead of being 145000 is now, you know, almost 900000 mm -hmm. nobody's paying anything. And Tom is getting $200,000 back. And we're just tearing through this, these payments. So, that could be something, but again, to the point we made earlier, this is only at, you know, 12 and a half million and at 1.84%, those numbers are going to be different as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think one of the things we want to do too is in con connection with, let's call it the capital plan and the road plan for lack of a better descriptor, we want to kind of get a projection together that I guess would have to come through the finance office of what are we looking at in terms of anticipated future bonding? Because I think that's going to play some, you know, that's going to have an impact also. I mean, if, but if the taxes Haynes is going to pay our outweigh the debt payment, we win, we don't care. We can just bond whatever we want to do. But I think between checking those numbers and getting a capital plan projection, let's call it, that'll, that can go out maybe 10 years. Yep. Then we're gonna have as much information as we can probably round up to get this thing, to get this thing going. But I, the, tax, the bottom line is the taxes that Haynes would pay have to be figured into this because if it's just a straight, Seymour's gotta write a check, eh, right. you know, that's, that's not too, too it's not a good situation to have to explain to the taxpayers out there about this either. We've got to be able to show that, yeah, Seymour in year, uh, in year 11 is going to pay, have to pay $752,000, but Haynes is paying 
six hundred thousand dollars in taxes. So yeah, we're writing a check for a hundred grand or something. Right. And I think that's the the selling of this. Yeah, I think like you said, we should do some sort of um, insurance policy slash you know bond completion because God forbid a COVID hits you know year year nine a new one absolutely and you shut everything down. we got to have some coverage there just in case. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, with this virus, nobody knows what the hell is going on. Yeah. And the bank won't care. If, no. if we're on the hook as a guarantor for debt and Haynes shuts down and they can't pay the debt, they're going to be, you know, be calling the telephone in town hall and say, oh, by the way, you got to write a check. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the, the one advantage, I shouldn't say advantage, we'll know what the worst case scenario would be. So once we actually have all the numbers, we could run yeah. something. The, only, the difference, though, might be we don't know what the interest rate will be in later years. Mm -hmm. and we also won't know at that point how much of a how much is left of the overall original note. So, you know, if, if Tom were to default at seven point four million here in year nine. We'd be borrowing seven point four million plus borrowing costs at whatever right. the interest rate was. And I'm not sure at that point, and this is something we would have to check with bond council, if they would allow, how far they would allow us to go out on the note. Because again, these buildings, your bonding is only allowed to go as long as the projected useful life. Of the building? Of whatever you're borrowing for. So if you're borrowing for a piece of equipment, if it's got a 10 year life expectancy, yeah, you bond it for more than 10 years. Gotcha. Build, buildings, uh, you can go out up to 30 years because they never they never changed the law after they adjusted it. Gotcha. Okay. That's one of the work. things, one of the thing, one of the things to throw in too, and I this may have no bearing on it at all. I don't know. But with like the American Rescue Plan money that's is supposed to be doled out, and a lot of the construction money that's that's coming into the state of Connecticut to be doled out. What are the odds or what would be the requirements or criteria for Seymour to qualify to get some of this money that we could put towards it? Which, you know, if Tom, if Haynes has to borrow 12 and a half million, or if he borrows 15 million and we could get pie in the sky, two and a half million, well, maybe we're back to 12 and a half million. There's those kind of pieces I think we also want to look at. Just to, you know, just to see what's there, maybe nothing, we can't do it. But I think that's, you know, that's a question for bond counsel, obviously, and probably Misero, the financial advisor, not to mention our own finance department. Yeah. I mean, with, with the ARP funds, um, it, it's very restricted um, for uses, with the exception of what they call the lo lost revenue monies. So there's a yep. formula that Doug has gone through because um, we kind of did it together for Seymour and Ansonia. And that money can basically be spent on whatever it is that the board of selectmen want to spend it on. Agreed. So, so but, they- Yeah, I'm they just pointing- But I'm yeah. saying, if, if you wanted to, you can pull a chunk of that money for a down payment on something like this. But you get 50%, currently at 50%, and get the other 50% um, next, late next spring. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's these little different avenues that if, I mean, in the perfect world, if they all fall, fall into place, we've got Uncle Sam paying for some of this. We've got some guarantees on, on debt. We may have some insurance involved with Haynes. Um, and getting a good projection on taxes or as best we can, I should say, on, on taxes for all of this. So, I mean, it's, it's, a little, it's a little bit of a project, but things break the right way. Maybe we're in real good shape. So you could, along those lines, Bill, that yeah. what you're talking about is, let's say you decided we're, we're going to put aside, you know, a million dollars. I'm just going to okay. make it a problem. Yeah of the ARP funds to use towards this project. So over these yep. first 10 payments right here, you could just knock 100,000 off each one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you there's, have, there's different ways you can do this. For that, right. Yeah. I mean, you, you yeah, can I mean, buy Tom Haynes out right away. 
which we're hopefully yeah. stimulate this column to start sooner. And then you're kind of turbocharging things. So it's all, I, I think we have a lot of options. Um, well, that's exactly right. I think in, now it's just a matter of exploring and making sure that between Matt Ritter and uh, Mizero and that little group of people that statutorily were okay. And that will lead into the projections area. Yes. Um, and, you know, so I, I guess we're going to have to get for that part of it, we're going to have to get uh, the Board of Select and Board of Finance and then our professional staff together just to figure out how they're going to spend it. Because I know there's some projects uh, coming up that they're trying to help, you know, up at Bungay School. Um, yep. And, you know, does some of that investment now, you know, the HVAC system, stuff like that, does that potentially put off the need for a new Bungay School for another eight, mm -hmm. nine, 10 years. That's why God made engineers. They're going yeah. you know, to have to take a look at it. So, um, cause yeah, I mean, if Bungie school, if Bungie school can get funded or get, get fixed absent having to go into some heavy duty construction and dealing with the state and their reimbursements and stuff. Okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. So is there anyone that has, an issue with this type of financing? Nope. Everyone's okay? Okay. Because, you know, I don't want to, I wanted to make sure everyone was on board just kind of with the overall philosophy before we start really digging into it because it's going to be time consuming putting all this together. And I didn't want to spend all that time and then you guys say, well, that idea is stupid. We don't want to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Is everyone based on this conversation, are we all now um, thinking that the way to go is a public private partnership and um, with the Haineses behind Stop and Shop? Because I know some people had some hesitancy about that, but now bringing the financial piece into it, is that what everyone is thinking? I think that's the only way we can afford it. I agree, I think it's the only way we can go. Yeah. I also agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bill, I, I know you're you're there too. Um, yeah. yeah so, I mean, exa exactly. Yeah. And then now the only one who had who who had a little hesitancy, but um, seemed to be a little bit more receptive to some of this stuff was Fred. Um, mm -hmm. So I certainly want to give him the opportunity to. Uh, he said he's going to watch the recording. So I just want Fred to have the ability to kind of. Listen, he may jump on before we're even done. He's at another meeting, but um, I, you know, I just want to give him the courtesy of at least hearing everything and then at least weighing in. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. Because that yeah, leads that's us that's only fair, right? So, so assuming that this is the direction we're going to go, then it's going to move us down to uh, what is item number five, and that is decisions regarding potential changes based on the finance models. Um, so I think we need to target a building, uh, in the neighborhood of 15 million. Um, and I know some of the initial drawings and con conceptual things that we got, uh, from Mike, and I know they were just, um, you know, they were just quick estimates. Uh, he was putting us in the neighborhood of 20 million. So I think if, again, if this is the direction we're all comfortable going, there's going to be a point where we're going to literally need to sit down with Tom and say, okay, 15 million is what we're spending. Here's our wish list and tell us how much of a we can get and kind of mix and match. Mm -hmm. what, ha what happens if we, playing devil's advocate with all this, what happens if we, we put out to, to him and we say, our target's 12 and a half million yeah. with, with nothing, with no change in what we want or whatever, but to see, you know, in his mind, when he's going to look at this, he's going to say, okay, you want this, you want that, you want this. He's going to put a punch list together and add it up. Maybe that only comes to 13 and a half million, not 15. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would, I would be more in favor of starting with a lower number of like 12 and a half and then let him see if it has to go up and then we can talk about it other than starting with a floor of 15 where 
it could end up at 18. Oh, no, my, I was just, coming up with a ceiling of 15. Oh, okay. Yeah, ceiling. yeah I, I, would, I, would still, I would still throw the 12 and a half at him and keep the 15 kind of, yeah, we know all about it, but what can we do with 12 and a half? I think that's a safe. I think that's a more conservative view. And if we we can do that, fine. If we can't, all right. Well, we we know we have the the fifteen as the ceiling. Right. The um, if we're going, this is something else that we had discussed. Um, if we went this way, I think it is prudent to bring on an owner's rep, uh, for lack of a better term, that has yeah. uh, the functionality to help guide us through um this process but also once we get to the point where the building begins someone that can be on site that knows what they're doing um, hey, clerk of the works yeah um i started talking to oh you'd some, have to have it yeah. yeah um i started talking to some different firms uh the other day trying to look for ones that are already uh pre-approved uh by das so that way we wouldn't have to really go through uh, any type of um, RFP or RFQ process because we're not really sure yet what we're going to need. And I think this is going to be more of an hourly type situation in the beginning um, to guide us through so we can do a, you know, an hourly not to exceed type thing. Um, but Whichever way we ultimately decide to go, we need to jump down to item number six, which is we need to, at some point, get in front of the Board of Selectmen um, and at least inform them of what we're looking at. Um, they are ultimately the ones that are going to make the decision as to how we're going to move forward. While we could all be in agreement that this is the best way to go, the Selectmen can tell us to go pound sand and, well, I guess then we're done. Um, so I think at some point we need to figure out when we need to get in front of them and how we need to do that. At that same point, we should be making an ask for um, some seed money to at least get us through this beginning part of the process. So does anybody have any thoughts on that? I, I don't, I mean, I don't have an issue on it. I mean, we, yeah, if this is going to get going, you got to have the right people. Yeah. yeah. You have to have the people and everything in place. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything done. So do you have, um, <clears throat> again, I don't want to overtax this board because I know that you're all volunteers. So are you comfortable with me working with um, the first, first Slack Women's office to get a person lined up or a company lined up to do this? Everybody comfortable with that? I don't want to cut you out of anything, but at the same time, I don't want to bog you down in the minutia of, you know, going through DAS, uh, you know, submittals and, and things like that. Well, you know, I think as long as through email, you keep us oh, as yeah, oh, yeah. from yeah. The, like what's going on. Like, yeah. I mean, like and, 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 like and, and in your position, and you, and in your position, uh, you know, we know you have all the time in the world during the day to devote to something like this project. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it would make I think it would make sense. OK. Um, yeah, I'll certainly keep everyone informed, um, because if, if you may have remembered over several meetings, uh, we had some different, um, you know, we'll call them clerk of the works type places logged in uh, to the company, uh, to the to the call. And I actually had one of them, uh, I kind of challenged them. Well, if you're interested, that's the one that put together that initial breakdown, the 20 million of what we were talking about and broke everything up. Um, so. I think, I think, I think irrespective of anybody that eventually gets this wonderful position we're talking about, they're going to have to do a conflict of interest in an ethics form. Oh, to make sure there's no conflicts among them, Haynes, uh, background checks are going to have to be done because you don't want to hire somebody that's worked for Haynes, pro Haynes, would love to get Haynes in, right. yeah. that type of thing. I'm not impugning anybody's honesty, obviously, but you know, business business people have been known to do stuff like that. 
No, they have not. Yeah, we'll put them through the uh, the Baturla vetting process. Yes. So, yeah, Rich will uh, Rich will rough them up. And um, when you do, when you do get, when you when you do get, when you do get whatever name, Kurt. Yep. Let me let me know. Um, our uh, our firm has probably the largest construction practice, or one of them, in the country. Yep. And we may have some people that have heard of them, not heard of them, whatever. Okay. And I can always just ask ask a couple questions here or there. They may not know anything, which is fine. Right. But you know, all the steps necessary to make sure this thing functions as smoothly and as independently and ethically as it can so no one can turn around and say yeah but nobody right. wants to listen to that later yeah we just came back from the ccm conference mm -hmm. uh, i was there amory was there so we we're able to uh, a big vendor show of course so i was able to talk oh, yeah. to a couple different uh companies that do this just to kind of meet their people i mean there's one or okay. two stuck out um that have a bunch of current municipal projects going on. So the, the first thing we'll do is once we kind of sort through this list a little bit is reach out directly to those mayors and first selectmen or superintendents. Sure. Um, you know, if it's school stuff, I'll tell them I'll have you call your counterparts there. Um, All right. And, or I should say, I'll ask you to call your counterparts there. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, just kind of get a feel for actually how, they, how they're doing. Exactly. You know, so. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. But I just didn't want to do stuff without you know, the board being included, but at the same time, I don't want to bog you down and, and slow the process down. So, um, all right. So I think we should, I think a month should give me enough time to kind of clean up this spreadsheet, um, have more conversations with Tom. Um, it'll also allow me to uh, get hooked up with Emory's office to kind of get that, uh, you know, that owner's rep stuff going. And then for our meeting in January, um, I can kind of report back on everything and give everybody, you know, a more in-depth update. In the meantime, I'll send updates as, as things are going on. Um, but does that seem okay with everybody? Yeah, why not? Kurt, I, I got a question. You're you're closer to Haynes. You're closer to Tom Haynes than probably anybody else here. Um, again, going back to succession, yeah. did you get any kind of feel for his from his kids or his uh, staff or whomever who will be there after he decides he wants to go to Florida and fish yeah. about anything like this? Because we, you know, obviously we don't want to start something and. Then, you know, he may leave or whatever, for, for whatever reason. And somebody said, yeah, no, we don't want to do that. Um, well, number one, Tom is probably the healthiest person I've ever met. <laughs> um, so I, I would expect that he's going to be active for at least 10 more years, if not more. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Just based on the, the way he maintains his body. I mean, he's very, very healthy. Um, so that's number one. Number two, every meeting that I've had with him, um, Kathy's always with him. Obviously, she's been his right hand for uh, forever, 20 years. Um, but his son, Patrick, is always there. Uh, Patrick is very engaged, very involved, and very interested. Uh, Tom's plan, I guess, is to uh, get this project up and running and get it to a good, strong place so that way he can essentially retire and turn it over to his kids. So okay. And that's what he said part. today, too. Yeah. He wants That's to make what he said sure. today in our meeting. Yeah, he, he, I think he just wants to make sure that his kids are, you know, quote unquote, set up for the years to, you know, for the foreseeable future, um, and can continue to grow and, and build a business. That's why he wants he wants to be very careful about how much debt he takes on. Um, you know, he wants to make sure that they maintain the flexibility they need to continue to grow the business. Uh, but he is very much committed to this project for him it's kind of a i don't know like a capping capping of his career by you know coming back to his hometown and just putting up this community center and then this huge mixed use development that will be a, a game changer for for his hometown so yeah okay yeah so i think he's 
I listen, I don't know how old he is, 64, 65, maybe, but I wish I was in that good of shape when I was 40. So. <laughs> All right. So what questions, comments, thoughts does anybody have? I guess we're at number seven. Members, comments? Nothing? All right. So, Amory, I will have a comment. Do you think that um, February or March would be okay with us making a presentation to the selectmen? Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. I would uh, say uh, probably our second meeting in February. Second meeting in February? Okay. Because the Board of Finance has our, you know, budget meetings all, all, all set. They don't want me to rest during February, March. No, not at all. That would be wrong. It's okay. We're going to do the summit, Bill. And we're going to get good yeah. sandwiches. Oh, as long as the sandwiches are there, that's fine. I'll be there. Exactly. <laughs> um, when, um, when do the budget workshops start? I'll send you the I'll send you the uh, worksheet. February February second. That's a Wednesday, and then it goes to Monday, Wednesday. Last year we finished up because of a couple of snow things and whatever. Board of Finance finished the, the last budget deliberation. I think it was the second week of March, if my memory is right. And when does the first select woman present? Middle of March. The yeah, the last one. The, the, the last she she'll end up if everything goes well we don't lose anything from snow uh she'll probably be on my guess is end of february something like that i'll okay. have steven we'll, we'll, i'll talk to you tomorrow kurt about that and i'll have i'll send you over the schedule okay because we're i'm gonna need steven to do some research yeah i just don't want i want to make sure i'm not bogging him down with too much stuff so i know it gets a little hectic no yeah. And and Amory or Bill, do you know where you guys are with the audit? It's supposed it's uh I had Doug get an extension just to make sure, but it should go out by the end of December. Yeah. Okay. If not sooner. Okay. I know I had, just I had I had Doug get an extension just because the first extension statutorily right. has to be filed by November 30th, and that's already been done. So it can go out. I'm going to guess if, if anything, probably mid mid December, barring a hiccup, it'll okay. go out. Right, say, I don't want to bog them down. Um, no, nah, trying to get you audit out the door for anything. So, um, okay. All right. So, anybody else want to add anything? Comments, thoughts? No. Don't forget the money should also include the statue. Oh, there will absolutely be a nice statue. Yes, um, is there any public here? I don't know, so I'll ask if there's any public comment. I mean, Mary, you're here. Do you want to add anything or no? I don't mean to put you on the spot. I may not even be at your computer. Nope, I'm good. Um, oh, love the plan. Love the plan. I think that Haynes, you know, private is probably the way to go. Um, we need a new building. That's all I could say to you guys it is, you know, take a walk through and you guys will see. We need, we need a new building and I think we're moving in the right direction. All right, good. Thank you, Mary. Um, I think that's the only other no. I mean, Steven's here, but he's running the meeting, so. Um, I think that covers everybody. So, all right. So then our next meeting, as we know, we will be January the 6th, uh, seven o'clock. Um, I think we're, and I obviously we'll, we'll see how things uh, play out over the next couple of weeks, but I think the plan would be to have that meeting in person. Um, and we'll want to get a place potentially where we can put a projector up or something. So hopefully we can get into the drummer room and put you know, some of this financing stuff up on the screen and kind of talk through it. Um, if the like, community center has a projection board as well, Kurt. Oh, they, okay. So why, you know, so why don't we just plan to meet there? Sounds good. Um, a little bit easier. We can just make a little note on the, um, on the agenda with change of location. So that should be fine. Um, and then I want everybody to think about, do we, or do we want not want to have 
a representative from Haynes at that meeting or if it's too soon. So you don't have to answer now, but just kind of think about it. If this is the direction that we want to go, do we want to start having a Haynes representative, which I assume is going to be Tom all the time, um, there to maybe ask questions, give feedback, um, just really open the dialogue to make sure that we're comfortable. If that's the case, then we need to make sure that we get that third party rep on, because uh, you know, other than Tim, I don't think any of us are, are builders. So um, we just need to make sure that we're properly staffed to address these, you know, these questions or comments. Or I thoughts. think we want to, I think we want to see as much of our detail that we're looking for. And mm -hmm. then once we're comfortable, yeah, yeah bring hands in. But, okay. but I think if we start with our projections and looking at this and looking at that, and maybe change this, maybe change that. I think we got to go in that we're all comfortable as a group with, what we think based on a projection then haynes can take a look at it offline come to the next meeting and say well about this or about that or etc okay. but it might be just a tad soon to have them in january i think okay oh that's good so now if fred has any questions or concerns do we need a special meeting or is that something to be answered through emails i think that's something that um we can answer through emails Okay. Uh, so obviously we'll we need to be careful to make sure we're not, there's no FOI violations. Right. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, so we'll make sure Fred listens to this. I, I think a lot of Fred's questions should be answered. I think, I think you guys asked a lot of good questions. Um, and hopefully we have at least a general direction out there. But, you know, just as a courtesy to him, I just want to make sure he has the chance to weigh in and, um, you know, kind of say whatever he would like to say. And then we can kind of take it from there. So correct. Okay, good. All right. All right. So um, like I said, I'll send updates um, as you know, Amory and I are kind of moving through some of these other parts. Um, if anybody has questions, I mean, please fire them out. And we'll just keep moving and get ready for the meeting in January. All right. Sounds great. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. Happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye -bye. Thank you, Kurt.